And thank you, John, for organizing all this and the rest of the organizers and, and the panel, distinguished panelists, speakers, and the, all the participants. So uh, this is about the brain uh, surgery update. And unfortunately, I don't have any updates for you. I'm just going to introduce to this concept of ultramicrosurgery. Uh, so it is a, a, a it is a the, the question is is micro neurosurgery microsurgery is dying right uh, that's the question we have been asking ourselves and I'm following a wonderful lecture by uh, Sanford he showed you guys the beautiful uh, uh, concepts of insular insular surgery uh, I, uh, so. Uh, but we have threats uh, and everybody does insular tumor surgery differently, uh, this mapping and going through the cortex. So these ideas of uh, uh, being minimally invasive as actually to me is abuse. Uh, so uh, people using like, oh, I have a keyhole, pinhole surgery. I, I do go through the orbit. Uh, I, I mean, this is, this is, these are the real threats. Threats we have, endovascular surgery, radio surgery, only if we use, it shouldn't be a threat actually, it should be a collaborative, uh, 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 adjunctive treatments, but we feel like we are threatened, right? Uh, same with the radio surgery. Sometimes we have this strange ultra conservative defensive approach. If the things we think we cannot do it, we say this is inoperable. This cannot be done. And we refer patient to the radio surgery and fear of making mistakes. Uh, 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 a level of neurosurgical training is getting worse and worse, uh, especially in the United States and lack of surgical skills. Like uh, uh, Sanford said, people, neurosurgeons, trainees don't spend time in the lab and shortcuts, overuse of unnecessary technology. And, and, and unfortunately you'll see some of them today and then you'll see every day. So what is ultra microsurgery? Ultra microsurgery is a concept, ideology based on microsurgical principles set by our pioneers, Yashagi, Drake, Sugita, Spessler, Dolenc, Ode Oliveria, Fukushima, Hernes Niemi. Concept, ideology based on neuroanatomical principles, as beautifully demonstrated by uh, uh, Professor Su, and concept that doesn't get stuck with terminology. The size of the target or the size of the craniotomy or size of the instruments. They are not microsurgery. They are not ultra microsurgery. This is the case, right? This is a gigantic case. Oh, I did beautiful surgery. It is not that difficult if you follow the principles of micro neurosurgery or ultra microsurgery. What are the princi principles? Correct surgical strategy, choosing the correct approach, correct size of anatomy, craniotomy is not just huge, not just small, it just to be safe enough craniotomy, enough size craniotomy, early devascularization of the tumor with extradural dissection and clinoidectomy. And I call this surgical embolization. If you do that, you don't need to do any embolization preoperatively. Tumor becomes a dead uh, necrotic tissue. And early decompression of the ipsilateral optic nerve and having the proximal control with the anterior clinoidectomy in case of vascular trouble and microvascular dissection to preserve the normal structures. And this is the results of microsurgery. Good results, good outcome, and we have no problem. But what about this? This tumor is compared to the previous tumor is much smaller, but it's more complex because contrary to the other tumor, this is involving encasing all the vasculature, A1, ICA, ICA and ICA bifurcation. So, and patient is very limited, no, almost no vision, just light perception. So how are we going to operate this? Same principles, but we're going to use ultra microsurgical techniques. After doing the craniotomy, enough size, extradural clinoidectomy, and optic unroofing, you see the optic canal here, and this will allow us to con have a proximal control in the clinoidal segment of the ICU. Okay, and then we'll come like the principles of the uh, aneurysm surgery, right? Get the proximal control get the distal control, then debulk and piece by piece remove the tumor. So we're gonna go find the, find the MCA. And that's difficult, yes, because there's a mass effect. And then we're gonna go debulk the tumor, 
until we get to the distal control. So I start seeing some MCA branches and that's gonna let me go dissect the tumor more, decompressing the optic nerve. And we know that optic patient is almost blind, only light perception, but we'll still preserve the normal anatomy and we'll give her a chance to maybe she, she can recover. Then we're going to the distal, finding the MCA, And then following MCA towards the, uh, towards the internal carotid artery bifurcation. And this, this microsurgical dissection will allow us to see this is a A1, A1 branches now. And if I have a trouble here, now I have distal control and proximal control. And I can repair if I have a, if I, I cause a problem. You just got the glimpse of the oculomotor nerve here. And now, we are applying the strategy of uh, uh, divide and concur, right? You divide the tumor, remove pieces, and now I'm coming towards the A1. So you just got the glimpse of A1. Tumor is all 360 uh, 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 degree around the A1. What uh, important thing is here, preserving the A1 perforators, these perforators here. Uh, you don't rush, you just keep doing it, sharp dissection, not too much traction, applying the traction, you just, we just got the PCOM and the anterior corridor. Now we have a better control and now I'm gonna get everything. Now I think I am winning the game here. So uh, dividing and ipsilateral optic nerve and another, another important structure here, Super hypophysial artery is going to the optic chiasm. So you need to spend time to preserve these very small arteries, okay? And we are dividing and preserving this very tiny, small arteries. Now you see that that is another branch and you don't know they are, applying, they are supplying chiasm or tumor. So if you don't know, you preserve them until you prove otherwise. A1 perforators going around, Tumor luckily is not very hard, moderate, moderate uh, uh, consistency. Now we are getting to the point that I am very close to the win this, this game. And then now we have to, we, we can cut and remove all this disease dura of the uh, lesser sphenoid wing and anthroclinoid and the, and the optic roof is already drilled and we can establish a Simpson grade one resection. And believe or not, in three months, uh, two to three months, she starts seeing some in this eye she wasn't able to before surgery. And this is ultra concepts of ultra microsurgery. Okay, U does ultra microsurgery mean minimal invasive? No. Does ultra microsurgery mean yes, minimal invasive and but same time maximally safe? These. We don't get stuck with this keyhole, minimal invasive, this, this, minimally small pinhole. I, I, I remove the brainstem tumor from the thoracic region. This is, this is all nonsense. And also on the contrary, doing like horrendous approaches unnecessarily, combine this, combine that, extreme, extreme, these are also wrong. Doesn't make sense. And this is what happens if you do it. This is an unfortunate case. This is radiation induced meningioma. Uh, 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 this patient had a childhood cancer and they did the uh, radiation at that time, high dose, and he developed this. And after one pterional craniotomy, he had five more surgeries just to get 10, 20% of the surgery through transciliary approach because they were minimally invasive. That's not mini being minimally invasive and safe. You, you let the tumor grow, see how extensive orbit, cavernous sinus, they did like a million surgeries here and at least two, three ra uh, radio surgery. And patient became blind, completely ophthalmologic. Now he's having visual problem on the left, left side. So you don't need to be minimally invasive or use the minimal term of minimal invasive. You need the exanterate the cavernous sinus, you need to remove as much as possible. It was extremely difficult to find the 
MCA branches in these cases after scarring uh, many, many surgeries. So I did the bypass M2 uh, uh, radial artery, external carotid to M2, and, and I debulked some tumor and came back as a second stage and removed the rest of the tumor. And this is the result, okay? This is pre-op. These are abdominal fat graft we put here because he had nothing here. And I had to leave this tumor because these were extremely attached to the basilar perforators. But remove the rest of it. And here in this location, uh, the tumor was again uh, uh, encasing the superior cerebellar perforators. So I had to leave some. But good outcome and definitive approach. It is not nonsense, minimally invasive transillary. So I am not against endoscopic surgery, okay? I am against using the terminology claiming that these surgeries are minimally invasive. Nothing we do, either go through the nose or go through the tiny hole, is minimally invasive. Everything we do in brain is maximally invasive. But that's not the point. Point, you should be maximally safe minimally disruptive, like, uh, like Sanford said. Okay, endoscopic resection. Look at this subependymoma. Look at this gliosis after endoscopic, right? This is minimally invasive? To me, not. This is the maximally invasive, okay? This is the surgery I did. Huge tumor, interhemispheric transcalosa. Look at the size of the callosum we removed, one centimeter callosotomy, no T2 flare changes. And they call this maximally invasive. It is not. Maximally safe, it's minimally invasive in reality. Interesting brain tumors, Glio insular gliomas, okay? That's the top surgery. And Sanford performed very well following Professor Yashagi's principles. I do the same. This is the example for typical insular grade for astrocytoma. You see the contrast enhancing part and non contrast enhancing part. I don't want to spend too much time with the, these things, but the same principles, okay? Opening the fissure wide, using the fissure, using the systems, not just going mapping all around and then destroy, disrupt the uh, uh, temporal and frontal opercula, okay? And principles set by the pioneers, wide arachnoid dis dissection, wide dissection of the veins so you can preserve all these veins, okay? And then applying the 10 suture, slight retraction, wide, wide dissection from way from M1 all the way to the parietal opercule. Okay. Once you got to the tumor, that's done. Okay. Then following the in circular sulcus on all sides, posterior, that triangle, and then removing the entire tumor. Good outcome, immediate post op, and this. She has been with us. This is a glioblastoma for years, more than four years, without any recurrence. This is ultra microsurgery. This is not the same as the previous insular glioma. This is going towards the anterior perforated substance, okay? More subinsular than the pure insular. So, what we're gonna do? First, we're gonna preserve, and we know that lenticular stress are involved, okay? Wide arachnoid dissection, moving the veins away but preserving the major veins and then getting to the tumor. You see these, unfortunately, GBMs different from the uh, uh, other gliomas, they don't respect these borders, okay? They will go and case uh, and, and, and cross the borders of that embryological borders. Problem here is the encasement of the lenticular strips. Okay, I don't suggest you do this kind of dissection after you gain enough experience. See, I am dissecting the lenticular, ah, oh God. I am dissecting the lenticular straight arteries, okay? I don't, I don't suggest you do this until you spend enough time in the lab or in the operating room. Look at these, these are all M1 lenticular strips. And then you can use ultrasonic aspirator at the very low intensity, five or 10 on these arteries, okay? That's, that's what I mean when I say lentic, uh, the ultra microsurgery. I am using technology, but I am operating. Technology is not operating. And you guys can do better, okay? 
I learn slow. Does ultra micro surgery mean maximally invasive? No. You, in certain cases, you do enough approach. This is an, a case example. Patient presented with the presented with the uh, 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 six nerve palsy, and my my presumptive diagnosis this is going to be a trigeminal schwannoma. Okay, it's cystic appearance, typical appearance, T2 hyperintense, and and heterogeneous appearance, and and also I kept the atypical meningioma in my mind. She's 60 year old, not very healthy person. I said we do enough approach, okay? Not combine, combine approach, but enough approach. Initial retrosigmoid craniotomy. We couldn't tell even at surgery what this might be. Pathology came back as a grade two meningioma. So now I left this tumor. I, it was very hard tumor, and I, I, I couldn't reach through the uh, meclescape supramatal drilling. And I try to pull it, it's not coming. So I don't want to give damage, right? Wait for the pathology, see what the pathology will come back. Pathology came back great, great to atypical meningioma. I don't want to leave this tumor now. I have to do gross total resection. That's the best care for the, this patient. We did the transcavernous approach, came back, and during clinoid principles again set by our, our pioneers, Dolench, Hakuba and go, uh, Dr. Krish. So it's heart tumor removing between tumor between the uh, uh, trigeminal nerve roots, going all the way back to the Meckles cave and pulling the tumor. And once you get the CSF, that means you are, you are doing well. You got to the trigeminal cistern and you remove the rest of the tumor, okay? So we did the enough approach. We need to do, come back and do more. And this is the fat graph, and she did very well. But sometimes enough approach, any approach you do is not enough for certain pathologies. And chordoma is one of them, okay? GBM is one of them. You have to do everything. Give your best to the patients and, and so they can, they can survive this terrible, horrible disease. This is a young man with the completely dysfunctional lower cranial nerves, loss weight, aspiration pneumonia. So first, what you need to do? Admit to the patient to the hospital, have elective tracheostomy and gastric tube place, feeding tube placement. Then start entertaining about the, what approach is best for this patient. So in this case, anything you do is, it should be like a Dr. Al Mefti suggested, do anything for these tumors, okay? We come and then after discussing, uh, first I decide to go infralabyrinthine, do the, do the uh, uh, test occlusion of the uh, sigmoid sinus so I can transect and I can reach high. And we entertain coming from the front back. Eventually we did everything and come back uh, and infralabyrinthine approach. Then far lateral transcondylar, extreme, extreme, whatever you call it, and complete skeletonization of the vertebral artery. And we know that vertebral artery is encased by the tumor. So now what I did, I have a proximal control. I am going to obtain the distal control, the principles of the aneurysm surgery. Remember that, right? So this is the distal word and proximal word, extradural word. So I need to dissect. Now I can win this because. I have control, okay? And I have to do very, very radical resection. This patient deserves that. So skeletonize that and eventually going into the hypoglossal canal, skeletonizing the hypoglossal nerve, intradurally and extradurally, and giving chance to recover. These, these nerves are paralyzed, but we wanna preserve them. They're peripheral nerves, okay? so. Establishing this one, fusing him, and coming back doing the endoscopic anterior approach, getting the rest, and this is the outcome. Okay, perfect. Gastrostomy tube is removed, tracheostomy is closed. He's doing very well. And this is the taking the risk, doing the maximum for this patient. And sometimes, 
microsurgery and ultra microsurgeries against this strange defensive ultra conservative approach okay this is a 69 year old woman slowly growing meningioma has been followed two years for nothing tumor gets more bigger bigger slowly they say it's okay it's nothing it's not causing any problem little headache little uh, gait imbalance it's okay you can tolerate if necessary we can radiate this is this is this is nonsense okay you need to remove and you need to do the right approach, okay? And that is combined transpetrosal approach. And you can get these results and you move on. Look at this, I mean, gross total resection. Even if you cannot do gross total in some, some of these cases, do near total, radical subtotal. So give the patient the best chance. And now we are moving to the other territory, right? Vascular neurosurgery. This is typical microsurgery. You'll, you'll hear from the uh, I think Dr. Zhu here, uh, wonderful micro neurosurgeon, ultra micro neurosurgeon. He did like a, I don't know, last time I checked him, 16,000, I don't know, 2 million. He does perfectly well. This is a typical case for double barrel bypass. Okay, you do this. This is, everybody can do this after enough training. Okay, micro neurosurgery, micro surgery, whatever you call it. Beautiful, patient does well. But sometimes, we have cases like this. Is a mycotic aneurysm. You don't have any STA. Is emergency surgery. Patient is great for subarachnoid hemorrhage, intertemporal hemorrhage. So what are you going to do? This is what you need to do. These submillimetric branches, you isolate them, is a, is a, cut them, okay, inside to bypass first. And these branches we measure like a 0.6 to 0.7 millimeter. This is the highest magnification you see due to inside to bypass. And then after that, I'm, I'm moving fast. So after the inside to end to side bypass, you come for other branch. So this is a, this mycotic aneurysm was at the branching point due to end to end anastomosis after excising the thing, okay? This is a small, yes, this really applies to the size, sometimes size matters, okay? And you see it's, everything is patent, not even a, she had a stroke and she made an excellent recovery after content has great force of arachnid And this is another example of standard microsurgery, okay? Giant thrombose, giant thrombose aneurysm. You just go there, with the plan. If you can, clip reconstruct and excise the aneurysm. If you cannot, entertain these bypass options, but go there be, and be prepared for all these bypass options. Don't go there just, I'm gonna clip, or don't go that I'm gonna bypass. If you can reconstruct, you should reconstruct this. This is a microsurgery, that's what you do. And uh, excellent results has been aneurysm free for almost like seven years, but, not every case you can reconstruct, okay? This is a fusiform giant aneurysm in a 10 year old boy. And this case, you need to do everything. And it's very hard to guess some, this case, can you do A3, A3 bypass? Is it enough distance between, see? See, you see here, and this branch is very small and there's no posterior collaterals from the posterior callosal arteries. You cannot just simply trap. So you have to do some kind of excision and bypass and A3, A3 is not possible or is possible, we'll find out. And, but you cannot go there just unprepared. I'm gonna do A3, A3 side to side and we couldn't, okay, we get to the proximal control and then we need to harvest the radial artery, do the interposition graft between the frontal branch of the STA to the A3. And during the harvest, we injure the radial artery and we repair that. So this is the artery and go there, go there, do the bypass. And now there's a size mismatch. How are we gonna overcome that? That's okay, ultra microsurgery, okay? The experience and the, and the time you spend in the lab will pay back. So narrow this artery and then do this way. And you see the bypass, 
working nicely immediately, post-op and post-op six months, post-op two years. He's back to school, he's doing great. Arterial venous malformations, okay? There is no microneurosurgery for arterial venous malformations. Arterial venous malformations is always ultra microsurgery. And, and these, this is the cream of cream, okay? Sharp dissection, identifying the normal anatomy, identifying the pathological anatomy. Just don't just go start doing the coagulation and going trying to resect and like a lobectomy. Don't do that. You, you're gonna run into trouble one day. So identify all feeders one by one, skeletonize them, identify the draining, draining arteries, draining veins, identify the normal structures passing by, not directly supplying. Put to temporary clip if you are not sure. And then you go start taking the taking the all these feeders once you are sure while they are going, okay? And take them one by one. See the AVM start turning blue. That means we are doing fine. Okay, now you can do dirty coagulation. Uh, uh, Yuha calls it dirty coagulation. Anything you, you need to do, okay? And keeping these AVM loops inside the dissection plane and leaving, as you know, the, uh, the, the draining veins lost. Uh, so, and paying attention which artery directly supplying, which artery is Ampassan artery. And if you do that, you are fine. AVM is, becomes a simple pathology, but if you don't follow the principles, you're going to be in the trouble. Okay? And then removing the rest. Good results. This is a typical micro or ultra microsurgery, whatever you call for AVMs. And this is another example, okay? How much time I have? Huh? And then last, this is the last case. Uh, uh, Samir, I'll, I'll, I'll be done soon. Dominant AVM is huge. And it's, these people tried, uh, recommended embolization. After embolization, radiation. Why? It is not, it's in the sylvium fissure. It's like a operating, doing a glioma surgery, insular glioma surgery. It, operculum is not involved at all. Why you embolize? Embolization only if necessary. Why you take the risk of two, two procedures, right? You skeletonize these. It's just to open the sylvian fissure, like you are removing the insular glioma. And identify the normal, identify the pathologic anatomy, then take the feeders, and you are done. Why are you subject the patient to the million proce procedures? So you left the dura here, it was to attach, and same principles like we are doing. You're doing bypass, you are doing glioma surgery, meningioma surgery, or whatever. And result is good. So, is microneurosurgery dying? Yes, is microneurosurgery is dying because of us. We complicate the issues. But ultramicrosurgery is born, okay? Go to the lab, spend time in the lab, read, listen, watch, dissect. That's the only way of achieving microneurosurgery or ultra microneurosurgery. Otherwise, you'll be wasting time. And this is the Dr. Chris soccer game. This is us. Good. This is microsurgery. Okay. Now I'm going to do the ultra microsurgery. After this is my knee surgery, I am very small. Okay. I am done. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and having me. Hope I cause a uh, controversial uh, discussion and I'm happy to discuss anything, any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you again for having me. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Baskaya, for uh, this excellent presentation. And uh, to always emphasize that you have to be a safe surgeon.